What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live stream. And uh, today, Kevin Campbell will be joining us. He'll be on in a few minutes. Um, he was traveling back to his house, um, so he's been slightly delayed. So I'm not taking the blame for being late today, but big up, Kev. He will be here in the next few minutes, but I thought let's get the show underway and uh, Kev can join. Big up to everyone locked in. Hope you're well today. We are in subscriber-only mode. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We're about 500 away from 70K, so let's get there sooner rather than later, people. Uh, 50 pence for the bus ride. Yeah, don't worry. He's on his way, people. Big up everyone locked in. Hope you're well. Uh, big up Chris. Um, Jay says, yo, hope you're well. Uh, we can't accept that. I, I'm telling you, usually it's me who's late, but um, now nah, Kev was traveling back to his house, I believe. So he was slightly delayed. And uh, I said, I'll just start the show. He should be here in the next few minutes. So no worries with that one. I'll try and hold fire with the topics of discussion um, until Kev joins the show. Uh, big up Simu said, uh, Big C currently at work, tuned in. Big up yourself. Uh, Curtis and the gang says, Shannon, hope you're well as well. Big up the Twitch gang. Big up everyone on YouTube. Uh, my favorite hat, LSU. I should have given it to I know. My apologies, bro. I know. He, he don't like this one. I think it's uh, it's Todd Bowley's team, right? So he's very anti this hat. Uh, big up AJA. I miss these shows. International break. Dry as F. I mean, listen, anybody... Um, anybody who watched England last night, by the way, I mean, you might as well put some paint on your wall, turn around and just stare at it. It's like it's a it's a golden generation of um, England players in the majority of positions on the pitch. And, you know, you watch England in these games and you're just like Southgate, man. I just I just don't know. We won't let the handbrake off. It's like having a Lamborghini. And driving down the road with the handbrake on, like, let it go, man. Why are England so boring to watch? You know, it's crazy that the football is slow, it's timid. Until Kane came on, they never really looked like scoring. You know, you're telling me Raheem Sterling can't get in that squad? I don't get it. Um, I actually said on a show that I did a couple of weeks ago, I said, I think England have got a chance of winning the Euros, but with this manager in charge, I just don't see how it's going to happen. And it's a shame because you've got Jude Bellingham, you've got Kane, you've got Rashford, you've got Saka, you've got Rice, you've got John Stones, you've got Kyle Walker. You're talking about top, top quality players. Um, but somehow, you know, this manager always seems to fluff it. Somehow his tactics are dreadful. And did anybody see the Mudrick situation yesterday? The man gets fouled in the last minute for Ukraine against Italy. Um, should have been a penalty. Stonewall penalty. Yeah, he may have exaggerated the fall a little bit. Um, but a blatant penalty. And the referee says no. And uh, Ukraine aren't given the penalty, which meant that Italy qualified for the Euros um, yesterday. And this whole thing has come out saying that the, the guy who runs FIFA or something was saying before the game, Italy need to qualify you need the Italians in a major tournament. So now there's all these conspiracy theories um, going on saying that FIFA were leaning towards Italy rather than Ukraine. And obviously, um, Zinchenko was was fuming, you know, on, on the sidelines. So, listen, it's interesting and uh, it would be interesting to see if there are any repercussions um, to that one afterwards. Um, before Kev does join, he should be here shortly, um, they've revealed some details of um of Arsenal's new kits for next season. I know it's a little bit early to be talking about new kits, but they're showing you the colours that Arsenal apparently are going to go for. So apparently the away kit is going to have this design next season, black and red, which I don't mind, actually. I'm a fan of like black and red as a, as a colour coordination. Um, apparently this is going to be the away kit for next season. Not necessarily the design. It could be a little bit different and so on and so forth. I know man like um, man like Elliot Roberts likes a kit, so uh, I'm giving you the... But I think that kind of design would really be a banger. Um, so the black and red combination there. And um, I think the next one was the, um, was the third kit, which was this one. I don't really know... 
I think some baby blue with this kind of like purple on the side as the third kit. So, yeah, I mean, Elliot's in the building. Did someone say black and red? I like the black and red from uh, that 424 stuff that we did with the black, with the red um, badge. And then they're going for this like baby blue one as well, which I'm not, uh, you know, I don't really know about that one. Also, for anybody wondering, Adidas next year on all their football kits are going to the sort of old retro Adidas badge on the chest rather than just like the free stripes that they've been using um, over the past few years. I mean, Jeremy's saying the away kit, take my money. 2017-18 um, kit. Um, at this point, Curtis is a fan of every shirt. Listen, I stayed away from that away shirt. That away shirt, I didn't go anywhere near it this season. I told you I wouldn't. Well, listen, that's a good point. You know, we are we are kind of studying the blueprint of Pep Guardiola and Manchester City playing in baby blue. So how else do you become Man City? You play in the same kit as them. It makes sense. Go for the, for the sky blue of Manchester City. So... Yeah, I, I think personally the uh, the black kit though that one that color coordination for me. Although they've put the free stripes on that one, so maybe they're not. Um, black and gold is definitely a nice color combo as well. Always works. Um, black and red's more Man United, says John. Yeah, I hear you on that. Away shirt is an instant delivery, says Kugler. Yeah, listen, it's it's difficult for me to stay away from that color combination. Uh, being said, the only way I buy this season's away kit is if we win something. I said the same thing. That away kit for me, I think, is awful. Um, although I think the younger audience probably can wear it a little bit better. Maybe they rock it better. Um, but for me, yeah, unless Arsenal win the title or we win the FA Cup final wearing that kit, I ain't going anywhere near that kit. I've got to be honest. It's a, it's a definite stay away from that kit for me. Um, for me, I've always said with the, I think Arsenal need to make a, a normal home kit, a normal away kit, and then the third kit go crazy. That's what I'm on. Uh, you know, nowadays there's an audience for these wild football kits. So I, but I think that the home and the away kit should follow the traditional colours of, of what Arsenal have sort of worn for a long time. Um, I felt that that wild kit that we wore this year should have been the third kit. Um, Amar said, I rate the away kit. Javal said, I got the away kit by accident. How do you get it by accident, bro? That's what I'm intrigued by. Um, don't be surprised if you hear someone knocking in the background late at Amazon with Curtis pre-ordering the kit. I'm going nowhere near that away kit. Trust me on that one. Um, another bit of news with Arsenal um, before um, Kev arrives. Hopefully he does arrive. He's not... He's not a man who's usually late. I am messaging him. Um, he said he's just dealing with um, something on his computer. So hopefully it won't be long. Um, the Dubai Globe Awards. And Arsenal have had some nominations um, for those awards. So the guys who've been nominated, best men's player, Martin Odegaard and Bakayo Saka have been nominated. Uh, best coach, Mikel Arteta. Uh, fair play to him. You know, they obviously didn't see the last six weeks. I I'm joking. I'm talking about the last six weeks of the season, by the way, not the one just gone by. Uh, best midfielder, Martin Odegaard and Declan Rice. And best goalkeeper, Aaron Ramsdale. I mean, boy, maybe Edu's doing the nominations. Uh, where's Eddie? I mean, listen, he'll, he'll be there somewhere. Um, uh, let, let me not start. You know, pe some people don't have the, uh, the patience or the sense of humour for my... Eddie Slandy, you know, but um, very interesting. So for the year of 2023, the Dubai Dior, the Dubai Dior, yeah, Fly Emirates tax, that's a banger. I mean, this, you know, Fly Emirates sponsor Arsenal, so maybe we, uh, we're massively in favour because of that. But some of these I'm a bit like, okay, you, you did have a decent season, but I'm not sure about you know, Arteta, coach of the year when Pep's just won the treble. You know, Aaron Ramsdale, Emmy won the World Cup. Edison won the treble. I don't see how he wins that. Declan Rice has done very well to get in there, considering half of that time he was at West Ham. Um, is this the Arsenal Awards in-house, Emirates Awards like the Emirates Cup? It, it could be. It could be. I don't know who nominates these awards or, you know, who actually turns up for these award shows? I'm not too sure, but 
Um, Arsenal are being nominated for a lot of them. I, it wouldn't surprise me if um, it's an in-house awards coming from Arsenal because some of these nominations are a little bit, a little bit out there, should we say? But um, it's um, it, it's always interesting to see Arsenal players um, and management getting nominated for these awards. Um, despite some of the seasons they had, I would have thought maybe Saliba would have been in there considering the season he had, but maybe the injury at the end of the season um, cost him cost him getting nominated. So, yeah, there we go on that one. And uh, another one that I thought was even more interested as well was uh, Edu. Man like Edu. Edu has won the Best European Director Award at the Golden Boy 2023. The best director, Edu. I mean, listen, Edu, former Invincible, respect. Met this guy in LA, respect, you know, cool. He was a cool guy, I can't lie, he was cool. You know, I respect him, but best European director award of the year. I'm a bit like, yeah, I, you know, yeah, maybe the best barbecue. I think we got to remember this guy just paid 65 million. I don't even want to say his name. There was people in my comments yesterday going, when are you just going to leave him alone in terms of number 29? I was like, leave him alone. I ain't even done the warm-up yet. I ain't even started stretching. You know, I mean, hey, listen, let me give Edu some credit. One thing we're not seeing at Arsenal anymore that we saw over the years, we're not seeing big players' contracts winding down, which we saw, you know, with Alexis Sanchez. We saw with you know, Ozil and Aubameyang, all these guys were getting into the last year of their contract. Now, players' contracts are secured. Saliba, Saka, Martinelli, all these guys' contracts are getting secured. But in terms of some of the deals that we failed to do, the Caicedos, the Mudricks, you know, the Vlajevic, and then things like, you know, spending 65 on... On, on Kai Havertz, you know, there, there's some real question marks there as well. So I just I just don't know. I, I don't know, man. I, I, I get it, but we got a we've got to really put things into context when Arsenal, as I said, it's a it's a it's a masterclass of PR again. But I I want to see him pull constant signings out of the bag, big signings that you know hit the ground running. I mean, Salman says, low standards, he's a good director because contracts don't run down, yet we spend money like idiots. I mean, I know there's been a lot of discussion over the last few days about Arsenal. Um, and um, and sort of the finances of Arsenal over the last few years and how we haven't been able to really sell many players for much money. I'm just messaging Kev now, just to see how he's getting on. Um, so I'll let you know how long he's going to be. It was the Gordon Ramsay Cooking Award. Yeah, I mean, Bruno Gomeres. You know, you look at him and you think, this guy was the technical director of the Brazilian national team. And you want to, you know, I was excited thinking, we're going to get four or five top quality Brazilians through the door. And um, we haven't managed to do it, really. I mean, Gabriel Magalhães and Gabriel Jesus obviously deserve credit. Tell Kev, bruv, I just messaged Kev, so I'm going to see what he says back. Uh, we missed out on Paqueta, 100%. We missed out on him. We should have got him. We should have definitely got Bruno Guimaraes. Our best signing was our re-signing of Saka, Martinelli, Saliba and Odegaard, says Twan. Um, SG said, uh, more like the best. Well, yeah, you know, the toes. You know, I won't read the rest. And Marquinhos definitely wasn't um, a hit record, should we say, in that sense. Uh, what's the next spend at Arsenal? That was Liverpool's big thing where they outdone everybody, Arsenal shambolic in sales. Well, listen, we know that Arsenal, in terms of net spend, we're, we're terrible in terms of selling players. We're just not good at doing it. You know, we got 21 million for Xhaka. We got about 25 for Willock a few years ago. I think our biggest sale is still Iwobi Oxlade-Chamberlain from years ago. So we're still not selling players for good enough money. But the problem is the players that we end up selling are the ones that are really not very good. We should have got more for Gwendouzi, but, um, you know, we, di we didn't manage to. Right, the man himself is here. He's turned up. Uh, Kev is in the building. Yo, yo, yo. 
<laughs> hey, listen. It's I've the been internet, on Kev. It's the internet. <laughs> no, it's not. It's listen. I've been on the computer most of the day, yeah. and all of a sudden there must be about eighteen gremlins in there, mate. I don't know what's oh. going on. So I have to come on my phone. So please forgive me, everybody. No worries. I, you know what? The community thought I was hustling them. They thought I'd clickbaited them. Kev's gonna be here, and then he don't turn up. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's sometimes it's better to wait for me. That's nice. Of At least course, they waited yeah. for me. Yeah, Respect. listen, pl pleasure to have you here anyway, Kev. Better late than never, of course, and uh, always appreciate you giving up your time. So we're going to sort of skim through it a little bit quicker. Well, Curtis, I've, I've got to say it's always a pleasure coming on with you. We always have a bit of energy. Yeah, man. And we obviously we've got plenty to talk about, as always. Of course. And um, do you know what? I'm sure you're going to find... Bad out of good. <laughs> <laughs> I am I'd sure. I'd rather say good out of bad, Kev. You know, that's what I try no, and no, do. But if you think about it, we haven't been that bad, Kurt. It's when you no, look we at haven't. where we are. So, of course, you know, good talking points. I'm sure. Of course. Right. Uh, let, let's just get into it because uh, first of all, I wanted to say well done on the interview that you and Sophie did with. Um, with Nick Mr. Ramsdale. Mr. Ramsdale. Yeah, because yeah. that, uh, like, during a quiet period, international break, that was, I turned on Sky Sports, it was there. I was in the car, Talk Sport, it was there. Just in general, I mean, for me, when I heard that interview, first of all, I always say, listen, you're a dad before anything else. So I heard a dad defending his boy. Fair enough. And, you know, we can all relate to that. But, then I kind of was a little bit thinking, number one, what would the club's reaction be to hearing that interview? And obviously that's something I want to ask you about being a former Arsenal player. And then second of all, I was kind of thinking what you're complaining about with Aaron, which I do understand, but that was the circumstances that he benefited from two years ago when we signed him. Leno was number one, but we all kind of knew it was a matter of time before Ramsdale took his shirt. So what was your feeling in general about what Nick said? Do you think there was anything wrong with it? Do you think it will help, Aaron? What was your thoughts on it? Well, Curtis, look, as when you have a podcast like you do, mm. the, the, the key for what you do and what everybody does is to try and provide content, right? Yeah. You, you try and provide content that, is different from everybody else. Yeah. And if you if you can build up a rapport with somebody, then it comes across actually on the pod. So Nick Ram, this isn't the first rodeo for Nick Ramsdale, as you well know. Yeah. A yeah. lot of people know Nick Ramsdale's been on probably three. He's that was his fourth time. He's been on three times previous to that. Yeah. There was there was never any problems, but you see. We always discuss this thing that the media are against us. So because of the context and the, and the time, it's international. Mm. We've got a lot of lazy media. Yeah. And they are anti-Arsenal. We all know that. What tends to happen is, Kurt, is me and Nick have a conversation. Nick's comfortable enough to come on yeah. And talk about how he feels about the situation. And, and don't forget, Curtis, I'm not saying it's all Arsenal fans who, who are part of the community. Yeah. But it is an Arsenal podcast. So you're keeping it in the family. He's keeping it in the family to discuss how he feels. It's his son. Why shouldn't yeah. he be able to discuss it? We could discuss it because I've been where his son's been. Yeah, yeah. So anybody who actually listen to the whole podcast because it's easy to take snippets of course it is yeah but when you listen to the whole podcast it really does give you the full picture of 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 what's going on how he feels he's not speaking for Aaron no chance yeah. he's just speaking as a dad I've seen his smile go and and let's be honest Curtis did he say anything that we didn't know already? No. Did, would you expect him to be smiling and all happy if he got if he's been dropped? No. He wants his place back. He wants the opportunity to prove himself. 
So once the once the media get hold of it and start to manipulate it, they then get the Arsenal fan base doing this, separating yeah. and starting to question: Is it the right thing to do? Will Mikel Arteta like it? Won't the club like it? The club have already done it. This is, if you spill the milk, don't, if you spill the milk, don't be upset when you're starting to clean it up, Curtis. Do you know what I mean? Don't be upset when you're cleaning it up because you have to start cleaning it up. And this is what a dad will try and do. A dad will try and help his son. But you heard, you heard Mr. Ramsdale say, what I don't want is anybody to be having a go at Ray. It's not Ray's problem. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, so, but you never heard the media say that. No, the no, media you didn't. just stayed on what they want to stay on. So, I thought it was a, I thought it was a good interview. There were a lot of Arsenal fans actually who came, who came after us, who said this, that, the other. But for me, Curtis, I think the media, Arsenal fans. Got the old okey doke. They fell for the okey doke again. Because what does it do? It causes division within our ranks when really we should be sticking together. Because do you know what? Whether it's Ramsdale, whether it's VAR, whether it's decisions with PGMOL, they're all against us. Whether it's pundits, they're all against us. We're supposed to be sticking together. We're supposed to be saying, do you know what? No. It isn't that way. Nick Ramsdale um, said what he's saying. Aaron Ramsdale, hey, listen, he's been, even when he claps Raya, <laughs> they've been against him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So they're just trying to cause all sorts of mayhem out of stuff. And I think it's, I think it's despicable, if I'm honest with you, Curtis. And Curtis, you know me, I say everybody's opinion is noted mm. and valid. You, everybody's got an opinion, but yeah. when you actually look at the facts, it was a good piece. It was for it was for Arsenal fans to get an idea on how Nick Ramsdale was feeling as a football dad. Mm. Like I'm, I'm a football dad, but I could put my two penny worth in because the same thing kind of happened to me when Righty turned up. Mm. So I can only tell him what I went through. And I'm sure he will relay that to Nick, uh, to to to, to um, his son, and his son will probably watch it and think, "What's all the problem?" Mm. Aaron will watch it and say, "What's the problem?" Because I don't think his dad spoke out of turn as a father. Mm. No, listen, we're content creators. You want content, so you want people to come on and speak openly instead of just you know sounding like a robot all the time i think um where where sort of the reaction i felt came from was like you said the media turned it into 10 seconds ramsdale's unhappy his dad said it and everyone's oh my god you know what i mean <laughs> yes. so it turned into some warfare did it but listen i thought it was great content you know what i mean during a quiet period and i think it is refreshing to to hear things like that and interviews like that. I think the feeling, the kind of pushback against it, if I'm being honest, was from my point of view, Not, I can't speak for anyone else. I think people were thinking, you've only been out of the team since September. You know, he was playing in August. He, he held his place at the start. It's only now November. And I think I was maybe thinking, do you just need to buckle down a bit? You, you've been in situations, you're not in the team and you think, well, I've just got to get my head down and keep, you know, putting the pressure on him here. I just wondered, would that interview have any negative effect on him if people at Arsenal just heard the headlines? Curtis, uh, you know what? I don't think so. I'll tell you why I don't think so. Go on. Uh, like I said, you can't cry over the spilt milk when the milk spilt. Yeah. So it's already been done to Aaron Ramsdale. Mm. We know that the manager prefers Raya, which is which is his prerogative at the end of the day. I don't see a lot of um, difference between the two. Mm. I was one of them who thought possession was nine-tenths of the law. But at the end of the day, it's up to the manager who he chooses. And Mikel Arteta 
has to accept whoever you drop is not going to be happy. You know what? Yeah. There's a, you've been involved in football, Curtis, and, and for everybody listening, there's a saying in football, it's not the first 11 you need to look after. It's all the others. You yeah. need to look after them to keep them happy because the, I guarantee you the ones that are playing have got the big smiles on their face. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, you know, you've got to keep the others happy. And Mikel Arteta is doing a decent, a, a really decent job at doing that. But not everybody, the way it was done sometimes yeah. is what is really painful for Aaron Ramsdale. It will be really painful for him because he was the he was the number one. And yeah, you're right, Curtis. He done the same thing to, to Leno. But that don't mean you remember Leno weren't happy when it happened to him. Mm. But for us, who are part of the media and the and 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 and, and fan base, to hear it on a podcast for us from the dad. Mm. about the dad's feelings, as he said from the start. I ain't speaking for Aaron, I speak for myself. Yeah. So, you know, hearing it from him, I thought was really refreshing yeah, yeah. as a fan base. But we know what the media can do. The media are very powerful. Right? Yeah, of course. Of course. Just briefly, because I, I want to move on from this, but um, not so much with the interview. With the situation of having two goalkeepers of that level, now, you hear managers all the time, and I think Arteta said in the press conference, I want two players in every position. Hmm. Do you think with a goalkeeper, it's possible to maintain that for a long time? Because I always think if you're a striker, if you're a winger, you might get the last 20 minutes. So you always knew as a striker, if I'm on the bench, but if he don't score and I come on and I score, the pressure, you know, I can put that pressure on him. With a goalkeeper, unless something happens, he's sitting on the bench for 90 minutes. So... Do you think this is a situation that is difficult to maintain for a long time? Well, it, 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 is, a diff, it is difficult to maintain, Curtis, especially as Aaron Ramsdale was keeper of the year last year. Mm. He's an England international. And the England manager has already come out and said You've got he's not going to be involved for his club. And it's, it's amazing. Yeah. You know, when people talk about one rule for one and one rule for another... He's got players in the squad who ain't playing for their clubs a lot of some of the time. Yeah, yeah, we know it. So, but he can afford to do that as the as the manager because there's England have got a load of goalkeepers who who would love to just be around, you know, who who are probably yeah. playing for their clubs. So that's a difficult one for him. Um, whichever way you cut it, slice it, look at it, Curtis. I think this is something that Arsenal have to address in the summer because they've got Raya on loan until the summer. Ramsdale obviously signed his new deal. You've got two number ones. You'd be crazy to, to do any business in January because yeah. whether you like it or not, we haven't been playing incredible. But we're sat where we are, Curtis, because we've been playing smart football and not giving too much away. This is now isn't the time to be playing fantastic football. We want to be playing football come the new year and moving forward. That's when we want to get into our stride. If we're sitting second or third or first, moving into that period and then we start playing well, that's that's where it's, we're going to have a real good race because we know the course and we know the distance now. Yeah. But um, I think it's something that Arsenal will have to address in the summer, Curtis, for yeah. sure. Yeah, no, I agree with you, Kev. Big up everyone locked in. Already 1,600 of you tuned in. Hit the like button and subscribe. Kev's in the building. And uh, you spoke well there about that interview. I know a lot of people were, were putting comments in wanting to know about that. Mm. Um, just looking back on the last few games since uh, I had you on the show, which was the last international break. Um, I think it was, that was the game after we'd beaten Man City. That Since then, obviously, we've played um, Chelsea, we played Burnley, we had the, the West Ham League Cup game, the Newcastle game. So we've had some decent results, a couple of um, disappointing results. So I just wanted to ask you briefly about 
um, the League Cup because um, there was a lot of talk about that game when we went out. A lot of people were very relaxed about the fact that we went out and said, you know, we got bigger things to aim for. But I was quite disappointed. And I know, obviously, you won the League Cup, yeah. you know, for Arsenal at Wembley, something you probably look back on, you know, with great fondness. That was actually the last time we won it. Yeah. We made seven changes for that game. Did, did Was you a little bit disappointed that we didn't take that game a bit more seriously? Or do you think this is the direction of this cup now that a lot of teams just kind of let it go away and whatever? Curtis, look, when we beat Brentford in the previous round, yeah, how many changes did we make? <laughs> yeah, we made very, yeah, very similar. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was very similar. We made very similar changes in that one. Um, I think the manager had to, he has to use the cup um, the Carabao Cup, and I'm sure you probably use the FA Cup at times to be able to rotate the squad. How, or else, how else are these guys going to get minutes? Mm. So at Brentford, they performed, they came out, they done really well. I just, I just thought it was a bad day at the office that West Ham um, game. It really yeah. was. And and you know, are we taking it serious? It's the same players who we, we, we've been relying on. You know, after that, we've been relying on some of these players um, getting in the first team uh, squad and starting. So, yeah. it for me, it was just a bad day at the office. You know, we 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 didn't look like we were going to score till Odegaard scored right at the death. Mm. You know, I mean, it could have been a could have given a free kick on the goalkeeper because Aaron Ramsdale got fouled. Yeah, yeah. Before Ben White headed it in. You know, typical. You get no luck. Ben White gets there first and heads it in his, his own net. Yeah, It's going to be a long day such from there. Well, fair play to West Ham. They played well on the day. You know, they deserved it, Curtis. Sometimes, if I said to you, which cup would you give up for a good season? A lot of people would say the Carabao. We'd give up the Carabao Cup to ever, to ever, to go distance in the FA Cup, the Champions League. Again, Curtis, we've got sometimes we've got bigger fish to fry. Oh, no, I don't God. like I don't like going out of any cup because I want to win everything. Yeah, I really do, and I was disappointed, Curtis. I've got to say, I was disappointed in the, I was disappointed in the performance. I was, dis you know what? I don't mind going out, but we never made a good account of ourselves against West Ham. You know, we didn't look like we were going to score. We looked poor on the day. And the, the manager had to start bringing on Declan Rice and he had to bring on uh, the guard and he had to start bringing on players that he probably didn't want to bring on the pitch. So, you know, we couldn't get over the line on that one, mate. Mm, sad, yeah. sad day for us. Disappointing, yeah, because it's just, it's just, for me, I think, at the moment, we're all in this crazy situation where it's like, Man City are this monster at the moment. We're all trying to overcome in the Premier League. So my thought process is kind of, you've got four opportunities at a trophy. You've got to try and pick off the odd one here. City went out the Carabao Cup early, so I thought, there we go. Go and go and get that one, you know, win it in March. It's a big confidence boost. But like you said, he's got to rotate the squad, but then the players let him down, really. Curtis, I think uh, Mikel Arteta is going for the big stuff. I really do. I think the concentration for Arsenal is has to be the big trophies. And, and and I'm not diminishing the Carabao Cup. Like you said, I'm I'm one of the players who, who won it the last time Arsenal won it. And you know what? That day at Wembley and winning it is incredible. Come on. But remember, we, our fan base laughed at Man United last season for winning the Carabao Cup. And they were crowing, you know, we've won a trophy. Yeah. They had a better season than us because they won silverware. But it was still, but it's only the Carabao Cup. So if there's anything you want to win, Curtis, you want to win one of the bigger trophies. And um, I really believe Mikel Arteta is concentrating on the big trophies. I really do. Mm, I mean, that's, that's a lot of uh, bravery and ambition. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of bravery in it to kind of let them trophies go to go for them big ones because we all know how difficult they are. One thing I will say, I think Arsenal have now settled into the Champions League very well. You know, we've managing that group quite well. 
if we win the game um, next week against Lons, we've won the group with a game to spare. What, what I wanted to ask you was, this Arsenal this season seems a lot different um, to the one from the previous season. We're a lot more expansive, free-flowing, goals left, right and centre. This one, though, seems a lot more solid, although maybe not as exciting. Now, we know George Graham had this reputation, 1-0 to the Arsenal, building from the back, the famous back four. Do you feel that we need to go in that direction to be more successful? Because we started losing games at the back end of last season. Well, if you haven't got your defence right... Yeah. And if you can't... Here's the, here's the important thing, Curtis. If you can't win games being smart and not being too expensive because some of those expensive games last season cost us. Yeah. And it's, listen, for, for the fans and everything, it's great. We're expensive and we got Martinelli, Saka, Jesus. We've got everything going forward. But we got caught a lot on the break. Yeah. Curtis, we got caught by teams. I mean, we hadn't even sat settled down to watch the game when we were 1-0 down in a few yeah. games. Yeah. No, that's not what we want. So, under George Graham, under Mikel Arteta now, I think Mikel Arteta watched the videos and said, Do you know what, we can't, we can't afford to be so open. So, we've got to do it a different way. And we, what we've got to do, we've got to be a, a, a lot more logical. We've got to be a lot smarter. And I think that 105 million bargain in Declan Rice, <laughs> I think that has really made us so much more difficult to break down, Curtis. Yeah. Because playing him as a box-to-box -box player, people don't even see him coming back and he just takes the ball off their toes. Yeah. It's, it's incredible what he can do, the legs he's got, but it makes us more solid. So the defenders can just stay in their position. They can play how they play. Zinchenko, if he plays, he can go into midfield. Tommy Arsenal, you see Tommy Arsenal going to midfield. But he's obviously a lot bigger, stronger um, defender than Zinchenko is. But I think we've got that flexibility, Curtis, in order to... Whoever we play against, we could match match teams up at the back there. And we'll always get a goal because, you know, we've got, we've got quality players up top. I'm sure we're going to talk about <laughs> our firepower um, mm, a little cool. bit deeper in the, in the podcast. But doing it the smarter way... Doing it in third, second or third gear, Curtis. Winning games. Being second in the table in second and third gear, Curtis. I'll take that. I think I think the positive thing, Kevin, what I've been looking at is like, you got to think we've got no Timber. We've got no Thomas Partey. Jesus has been injured twice. Odegaard has not been at his best. We haven't even really seen the Partey and Rice combination yet. So, you know, David Ray is just sort of settling into the club. So I kind of look at him and think half of our team that we would have picked if everyone was available has been unavailable at certain times. Well, don't forget Havertz as well. Havertz, a lot of the time, <laughs> Curtis, yeah. do you know what? A lot of the time, Havertz has just been normal. We are <laughs> expecting a lot more from Havertz, but Havertz has just been normal. He hasn't ripped any trees up, if that... and sometimes he hasn't been he hasn't been terrible. He's just been normal, but we expect more from him. But here's the key thing, you see, Curtis: if we then get to the new year and beyond, and everybody raises it five percent, all of a sudden we're a different team. That's what we've got to look at because we haven't played really well as a team yet for a long stretch. We can get the job done. But playing well, blowing teams away, we haven't really done that. We've done that who was it, against PSV in the mm. Champions League. We've only done it a couple of times this season. But yeah. I'm expecting more of that to come, Curtis. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree with that. Uh, people are on you with the normal um, have a thing. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> but listen, but again, the, the expectation yeah. for what people... Listen, Kai Havertz isn't the type of player to put Arsenal on his back and carry us. He was never that type of player. But even with a normal Havertz, we sit top of our Champions League group and second in the in the in the Premier League. 
People, you can't tell me we, 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 we're we carrying this player. Nonsense. It's nonsense. It's, I mean, we're not carrying him. He's just been normal. Average, mm. normal, say what you want. You could say, oh, he's been five out of ten. Yeah, I, I accept that he's been five out of ten. But there ain't been many who have been seven or eight mm. out of ten. Declan Rice will pr and, and Saliba and probably Gabriel Magdalene. You know, there's been a few. Saka hasn't been at his best. Martinelli hasn't been at his best. Jesus at times hasn't been at his best. So Mar um, Odegaard hasn't been at his best. So there's four of our mainstays attacking-wise last season who ain't been at their best. Kai Havertz ain't going to carry us. I, I, think, I think the thing is, though, Kev, just two things I would say to that. Number one, because of... You know, he's playing in a role that Xhaka was playing in last year. And we had enough arguments about Xhaka, but he actually had a good season last year. He hasn't been as good as Xhaka. And also, I think, number one, the price tag. And number two, the fact he's come from, you know, a London rival. I think expectation was... Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. The has been, was high, wasn't it? Yeah, but because he's, because he's come from a London rival means nothing. What does that mean? But what about the price? No, the, the, the price is the price. The, the bottom line is this, Curtis. He still has to come into our club. He still has to settle in. And for if we were in sixth position, then you could start saying, we've dropped off, man. Look at us. We've dropped off because Havertz ain't been doing it or we ain't been doing it as a team. We sit second in the table. We're top of our Champions League group. And yeah, he's been average. But many have been average. Many of our attacking players have been average this season. They haven't been great. They haven't. I think the argument you would put is, you look at Saka and, and those guys, they, he's still putting up numbers. He's getting goals, getting assists. He's affecting the outcome. With, with Havertz, you look, he's got one goal in 19 games. I think, uh, you know, people expect more than that. I'd say Curtis, he's below I, average. Curtis, like I've said, People will have big expectation on him. Of course they will. But we have to look at the big picture. Where are we sat? We are sat second in the table, two points off Man City, and we sit top of our Champions League group. If you somebody said that to you at the start of the season, would you take that? I would take it, wouldn't you? Regardless, regardless who's been doing the business or not, the key is, Curtis, we, we we need Havertz to improve as the season goes along. Just like we need Erdogan to improve, Saka to improve, Martinelli. Remember, we're talking about Saka and Martinelli. These guys have been there doing it at Arsenal for a little while now. Havertz has been at the club since since the summer. I think we can so, both we can both agree though he has to improve, don't I, I've said that. He had, of course he does. He has to improve. Latte's saying below average. Well, listen, <laughs> so you think that, listen, you could say that, but if he's I below agree. average and we're still sat where we're sat, mm. I'll take it. Honestly, I'll take it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah I suppose it, it's interesting. I, I don't want to talk about Havertz for too long because I bang on about him. On a daily basis. <laughs> I know, don't worry. You I know, want to man. keep quiet sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, looking ahead anyway, January transfer windows around the corner. Like I get excited. You know, I know we shouldn't always, not always the shiny new toy, but you like a little, you know, something to just drop into your team in January, man. The Athletic have put out this report yesterday saying that. Arsenal's priority is a centre midfielder. Now, listen, we don't know. Are they going to buy one, two, three players? Who knows? Um, a lot of us would like to see a striker come in. Um, what's your thoughts? That They're running with this Douglas Louise thing a lot. Seems like a very difficult deal to get done. He signed a four-year deal last year. Villa are not short of cash. What do you make of Louise? And what do you make of maybe a midfielder being the priority? Yeah, I, I think... Um... <clears throat> The problems with the general, Curtis, yeah, um, has left us short. You know, I, I love Partey, Thomas Partey. I yeah. love the general. Um, 
We would have loved to see him and Rice as a as a tandem in that midfield. We haven't been able to see it solely because the general can't stay fit. And um, obviously, you've got African nations, Cup of Nations coming up as well. What are we going to lose him for minimum a month or six weeks or whatever it is? So I think that's a that's a part of the team where we've got to not necessarily upgrade, but we need somebody who's going to be able to stay fit and, and we've got mm. to be, be able to rely on. Um, yeah. Douglas Weiss has, has played very well for Villa. Um, we, we've seen that. He scores goals. He gets about the pitch. Mikel Arteta knows him as well because he was at City when he was there. Um, we've been linked with him for Ages. a couple of seasons now. It's, you know, yeah. we've been linked with him for a couple of seasons. There was big talk of us buying him, was it, last summer? Didn't yeah. quite happen. Um, so I could see Arsenal really making that that move in this in this window because no disrespect, El Nani's not the not that player to come in and re really make a difference. I think El Nani could do a job, but week in, week out, he's not that player to really, you know, keep us at a certain level. Um I think to be able to allow Declan Rice to do the box to box, we need a midfielder. Jorginho's a good player and he's he's helped, but we need somebody younger with more legs, with more with more fire, um, to get around the pitch to protect. Uh, so I think it could be a good move for Douglas Luiz. I see this happening, and you know what? It might. I don't want to set the 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 chat on fire, Curtis, but there we go. There might be a little swap involved with a certain Ooh. ESR. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Any inside we know, info there, Kev, or is that a hunch? No, we, no, it's there's there's no there's no knowledge or no news, but I just think ESR, we love ESR, we, we love the songs, we love all that. <laughs> But when you're a club like Arsenal and you, you you want to progress, you've got to look at your squad. ESR, for all he's trying to get himself going, etc., he keeps breaking down as well. Do you know what I mean, Curtis? So we know that they cover ESR. We know um, the manager, Unai Emery, knows ESR. He rates ESR. It might just be a deal that, and because of financial fair play as well, it might help with with the deal. Sad to say, but ESR hasn't played enough football mm. or been fit enough to play. Do you know what? I'll, I'll be honest. I've really tried to defend ESR on this channel because... You know, he's just a player I like. He's got goals. I love him. It. It's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. Curtis, I love him. And you know what? I love him. But if we want to be the best, Curtis, we've got to be ruthless. As a football club, we sentiment has to go out the window. And you saw Mikel Arteta with Ramsdale. Sentiment goes out the window. He, he's, he's as ruthless as they come. So this is what we have to be. If, we, if we're going to be challenging the likes of Man City... And Liverpool there, we're gonna to have to fight fire with fire. We can't we can't be sentimental. Would you say that ESR, you know, if he went, is that is that more down to fitness? It's not ability, is it? It's no. more the fact he's not available enough. Yeah, definitely. And for me, it, it will be sad, Curtis, if it was to happen. Don't get me wrong, mm. because I think ESR has got incredible ability and can help any team when he's fit. Yeah, But that's the problem, when he's fit. This is why I think maybe not in January, but in the summer, I think they're going to, Thomas Partey, the general is going to be gone. Because oh, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you need players, squad players to start or be on the bench but you need availability. The best ability is availability. Yeah. And if you're not available, you're wasting, you know, it's a waste no of money. 
Yeah, yeah, I hear you on that. Th there's a story today in the um. <laughs> <Yeah>. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, Kev, do you know what? It was funny. Yeah, you know when you was when you were saying the Havertz figure, you was doing that. He's been normal. I was like, I was like trying to move it down. <laughs> the comment. I have to. Lads, I got it below average. Yeah, that rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm, hey, trying, I'm trying to at least keep it normal. I know the, the, you are. You're trying. But, but the only reason I keep it normal, Curtis, yeah. is because we're second in the league and we're top of our Champions League group. Mm. If if a man was below average, we, we couldn't be there. Mm. Especially when we're not playing well as a team. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Kev, um, hey, big up everyone locked in. There's nearly 2,000 of you. Hit the like button and subscribe, people. Um, there's a story today, Marseille, trying to get Fabio Vieira potentially in January, um, loan with an option to buy in the summer. He's another player that, you know, I've had, uh, we've spoke about him a number of times. Abilities, you can see he's got ability, but hasn't really produced much, has it? Um Hey, hey, Kev, I think the police are coming for you for that. <laughs> they, they said, what? Normal? No, nah, lock him up. <laughs> Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. No, Kev, yeah. Fabio Vieira potentially in January. What's your thoughts on him? Uh, I, I don't see um, that going anywhere. No. I'm, I, I know. Because the likes of VSR are injured. Thomas Partey's been been injured quite a bit as well. Um, I think Vieira's come on at times and done okay off the bench. Um, but sometimes that's what we need. We need impact players to come off the bench. I just think we don't have the depth to be saying, you know, we could let you go on loan. Who, who else have we got? We, we haven't got a lot of depth there. Um, so I think Vieira goes nowhere. Unless, obviously, you're bringing other players in. But January is not the time usually to do that. Maximum, you tend to get one, two players max Yeah. in Jan. And I think we've got other priorities in other positions um, that we need to prioritise. So you don't see that one happening. Yeah, I think, yeah, I can't see Arsenal loaning players out like that and giving us you know, less depth than we've already got. Let's let's talk quickly about the striker position, um, which we always like to to touch on and discuss. I mean, I'm a little bit more comfortable than I was the last time we spoke, if I'm being totally honest, because number one, Gabriel Jesus is back in full training. Number two, I've liked what I've seen of Trossard in the last two mm. games in that position. Um, no disrespect to Eddie, but, you know, I just think Trossard knits the wingers together and what, what have you made of that in the last in the last few weeks? Yeah, I think, look, Jesus being out early doors and then obviously for the last little bit, they've shared it, haven't they? You see Trossard yeah. and Eddie have, have, have shared the load. I mean, even at times, you know, Martinelli, I think Martinelli played striker for Brazil the other day. Yeah. Scored yeah, as well. Cool. So we know Martinelli might end up there, but I think for, in this Arsenal team, Martinelli is a key um, component on the left hand side. Trossard, I think, is one of the most underrated players in the Premier League. Mm. Uh, very, very good player. But I think Eddie has done pretty well as well. I know he's not the answer, Curtis. That I do know. He's not the answer long term. But I think between them, um, they've, they've done all right. I mean, even putting Havertz up there gives us another dimension. Because when we done that against Man City, it, it proved to be quite fruitful. That's how we get the goal. You know, it, it, it causes problems. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a tall guy. So we mm. can bypass a midfield to hit him. So I do think we have options. Um, but I think Trossard has got that football brain that a lot of, lot of Arsenal fans like and respect. Curtis, yeah. because mm. I think Trossard as a player, when he came in, I thought, think people are looking at what type of player. But don't matter where you play him, if he's not scoring goals, he's 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 he's, he's making assists. 
he can he can play anywhere. He's a he's a he's a fine player. He's a damn good player, and um, I think people prefer him to Eddie at a lot of the time. So yeah, again, depending on who we're playing, I think Mikel Arteta rotates it to to suit the team. Yeah, and no, listen, Trossard is just one of them clever players, isn't he? Baller. I think Baller, attacking midfield, striker, left wing. He's he's going to play and you need players like that. Sadiq said, Kev, I disrespected Rice back in March when we were linked. You were on the show. You were right. Rice is the real deal. I've got to be honest, Kev, right? I, I, I thought Rice was good, right? But when we were talking about 100, I was like... I kept saying English tax, you can get a guy, but I, I got to hold my hands up. This guy, like you said, we're not even talking about the price no more. I don't even care about the price. We got two Rolls Royces, mate. <laughs> we got we got a Phantom and we got a Cullinan, bro. I'm telling you, Saliba you know I mean? there and this man there. Whichever, whichever one you want to pick for the day, jump in, bro. It's jump mad. in because. Declan Rice, I know a lot of... Remember, when I was on, as it, it, a lot of people came at me, oh, there's that, that, we should do this, we should do that. But listen, you, when you study, when you study players, and um, I looked at the tool bag at West Ham that Declan Rice has, he fits us so, so well. Does it seem like he's ever played anywhere else? He looked no. like he's been at the club for years. And, Curtis, this is the great thing. He's only going to get better. He's only going to get better at our football club. The key to what we do now, Curtis, we've got to we've got to put the pieces around him and compliment him. You know, yeah. we've got to compliment him. The general hasn't been fit. Jorginho's gone in there. He's done, done a pretty good job with Declan Rice at times. But you get somebody else who really compliments him so... He doesn't have to worry, even worry too much about doing that legwork back. Somebody else could deal with it, like Partey would. Mm. We're in business, Curtis. I tell you, we are. We will be in big business. I, I want to ask you something because I haven't got too much longer on the show, unfortunately. This one. Uh, hopefully, I'll get you on another show. No, definitely, I'll come back on because what? What was it? Thirty odd minutes. Yeah, yeah. It, so for those I just tuning you, in, I owe you thirty odd minutes. You owe me thirty, so I need I need a thirty minute appearance this week <laughs> sometime if we can. You said earlier in the show you believe Arteta is aiming for the big trophies, which is a brave thing to do. But I, you know, it's ambitious. If we don't win any of those trophies this year, I mean, listen. Hopefully, we do, and we're celebrating, and it's wild. But if we don't, because the argument I always have with people with Arteta is. You know, what's the end goal? How long is it going to take? They say, trust the process. They say, what is the process? So, you know, most managers at big clubs don't get year after year after year after year unless there's trophies there. If he doesn't win a Champions League or a Premier League this season, what, what do you think has to happen again in the summer? Is it a case of he needs more money to build the team? Does his job need to be on the line? Is it What, what do you feel the, the direction is moving forward? Well, I know a lot of fan, a lot of the fan base want to put his neck in the block. <laughs> they do, and I know you're one of them, Curtis. At times, um, but truthfully, truthfully, well. I still think there's work to be done. Our squad is nowhere near finished, and I'm sure, Curtis. If I said to you, is our squad finished? You would say no. Yeah, definitely. So if we don't win the big trophies, a lot of it sometimes comes down to how we go out. If we if we go right to the end of the Premier League and we, we, we miss out, all you've got the opportunity to do is challenge. If you don't get over the line, that means something's missing and whether it's firepower or that extra midfielder that, that you never done in january you know what i mean there's something that's going to be missing we are not the finished article yet but that also comes with a young side maturing so you're gonna you're gonna try and get everything moving in the right direction together now 
Mikel Arteta will be judged by a lot of the Arsenal fan base. If he doesn't win trophies, we need this one, we need that one. But getting this one and that one don't um, guarantee you anything. The key is we've got to be able to compete, compete in the Champions League, win our group, get through to the knockout stage and start going through the rounds. That's the key. We've got to show that ambition that we can do it. If we can do that, brilliant. Premier League, we've got to take it to the end, Curtis, because we just failed at the end last season. We've got to take it right to the end this season and hopefully win it. But we've got to show we know the course and the distance now. We've got to show it. So if we fall off, that just, you know, a lot of the, the, the chats, machettes are getting sharp and left, right, and left. <laughs> your, your samurai's getting sharp. And I, I, I get that. But when you look at the big picture, we are still building. We are not the finished article. Great. We need to win trophies. But if I were to say to you, you put our squad, our firepower against Man City and Liverpool, our firepower isn't the same as City's or Liverpool's. Mm. I, su I suppose the argument people would use, though, is, you know, Klopp after four or five years at Liverpool, you know, with a similar spend, he was winning yeah, trophies could say, into the yeah. Champions League finals. And that's Curtis. not Man City. Yeah, but Curtis, you can say that, but that's already gone. <laughs> now, you're dealing with two teams. You're dealing with City and Liverpool. Who, you, who Liverpool all of a sudden have reinvented themselves. They only needed a couple of players. that Because the, the difference was that midfield. Now they've got them. All of a sudden, you're starting to see them emerge. Why? Because a lot of the time, Curtis, they concede goals, but they'll, they'll outscore you. Uh, yeah, they bag, they bag. They bag goals, they'll outscore you because Klopp can mix and match that front three or four, five. He's got firepower. Do we have that same firepower? No. We have to do it a different way. So until we get some real firepower, last season we showed firepower, but we were too open. This year we're playing a lot more smarter, but we're not as powerful yet. Do you know what, Curtis? I'm going to ask you a question. Go on. And, and I'm going to ask the, the chat a question. Would you sign Vlaovic? If he became available in January, would you sign him? As opposed to Ivan Tony? So are you giving me the choice of either one or are you just... No. No. I'm not. I'm saying you can't sign Ivan Tony. Would you sign Vlaovic? Hmm, it's a good question. It's a very good question because I've never been fully, fully convinced by him, to be honest, but maybe I haven't watched enough of it. No, but that's fair. Do you know what I mean? But, but that's fair. But the key is a quality striker becomes available who yeah. you can sign in Jan. You no, know, you might have to pull the trigger, yeah. Is he an, is he an upgrade on Eddie? Definitely. Is he an upgrade on Trossard to say play number nine? Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, is it, yeah. And the chances we create, <laughs> one thing I can I can say, he's a finisher. Head, left foot, right foot, he's a finisher. So if he became available, do we pull the trigger? Do we not? You know, and, and these are the type of things because we're coming up to, to Jan, apparently problems with Juventus mm. because, you know, a, a, a big kicker in his contract comes comes online soon. Yeah. You know, it might, that might be something that's available, but I know if Ivan Tony's there to be at, I'm sure you want Ivan Tony. Yeah, I, listen, I, I I think both have an argument. Tony seems a lot more streetwise and ready. He's, he's Premier League ready, isn't he? But... <laughs> Vlajevic is nearly five years younger than him. So I think Arsenal would probably look at a Vlajevic because they want an asset that's going to get more and more valuable, you know, rather than somebody that towards 30 might be less valuable. Well, oh, you know what, Kurt? Here's the funny thing. Arsenal, Arsenal, for me, I think we have to get out of that mindset of Arsenal buying for value. 
I agree with that, but I'm saying the club seem to do that. No, but I think what Arsenal do, Arsenal are signing players to have the longevity with them. Yeah, yeah. Because at the end of the day, the only va if you bring a player in and his value goes up, you're only going to be selling them to the rivals who you're going to be trying to challenge, whether anyway, it's in yeah. domestically or Europe anyway. And, yeah. and them days are done at our club. We've given yeah. away so many players to, to rivals. But buying players who can improve with you season after season after season, I think is really important. And, and that's what Arsenal tend to do now. So, but again, Ivan Tony, what what is he, 29? He's 27. He turns 28 in like May, so, I think. So, all right, let's say he, he turns 28. <laughs> So even if it's a five-year deal, you've got him till he's 33. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You've got him till he's 33. Within that time frame, you've got to make hay. You've got to. I think the thing for me now with Arsenal is just in the transfer market, because we're not Man City. A Man City can sign a man, it don't work. Yo, next one comes in, you go. You know what I mean? We can't do that. So I feel like we, we're... We've got to nail the signings more often than not. Rice, we've nailed it. Do you know what I mean? We can all see that. Havertz, at the moment, it's not nailed, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. He's going to be here for a while. Still, yeah, it's still, Timber, you know, Timber. Timber looked like nailed as well. Yeah, Timber looks the real deal. Pity is injured, but yeah. apparently he's ahead of schedule, so fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah, we need him back, you know? And so... I, this January transfer window is going to be massive for us because I think that, like you said, there's a few players on the fringes, your Ramsdales, your ESRs, they're going to be thinking European championships. I can't sit down for six months. And then there's players out there you might be able to bring in financial problems, like you said. So mm. I think it's a very big window for us again. Another big window for us, Curtis. We're going for Premier League title. We want to bring in as much quality as we can. We want to bring in quality that yeah. is a difference maker. Yeah, 100%. The problems are, Curtis, you know the problems. Again, you know, FFP, we've done a great deal with Brentford yeah. and with Ray up for a three million loan. Done a great deal. If we could, if we could get a, a few like that, we'd, we'd swim the channel, but I don't think other clubs would be as welcoming to us as that. Maybe the one that would be clever is this Ruben Neves one. They're saying from Saudi, you could potentially get him on a six-month loan while their league's finished. I think that would be quite clever business. Yeah, that would be really good business. Um, but the shout is Newcastle could sign him. Okay, yeah. Um, so we'll have to see that one. We'll have to yeah. see about that one. But yeah. again, Curtis, there might have to be some flexibility in how we acquire certain players. Yeah, big definitely. time. Listen, people, I'm gonna have to go because, like uh, Nick Ramsdale, I've got to go and sort out my son. So <laughs> I've got to go and do the school run. But Kev, just let me know when it's suitable. I'd love to get you on again because obviously the first twenty odd thirty minutes, you yeah, I owe you thirty for that. So yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. But listen, thanks, Curtis, for having me on. No um, worries, sorry, bro. I couldn't join uh, because the computer kind of blew up. <laughs> but, but I'll be back, Curtis. I'll be back hopefully this week. If not, yeah. early next week, I'll be on. Yeah, no worries. Appreciate you coming on. Big up to everyone who tuned in. Hit the like button, subscribe. You got a show coming up tonight or anything? Uh, I'm actually with Mr. Door tonight at nine. Oh, yeah, I'll tune on the in. Forest forest. Board, so, Talking yeah, I've got forest. one tonight. Yeah, all right, Kev. Big up. Big up to everyone tuned in. I'll be back tomorrow, 2 p.m., people.